Here with Daniel Burnett and Taz Dienens. So, okay. Come on up. yeah. Come on. Thank you so much. Woo! <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, they're still filling in a little bit here. All right. Um, I'll start with the clicker. Okay. Um, thanks, everyone. Um, so we're going to be talking, well, obviously, about community projects, um, and I'll just I'll just launch right into it. I'm going to talk a little bit about the history, and then Tosh will get into what we're doing today and and what you can uh, what you can do uh, through the community projects going forward. Okay, so um, so when we created the community projects originally, our goal was to increase or improve the quality of standards in the Ethereum community, and and that's an interesting statement. Uh, that's actually what was brought to us initially by um, uh, some folks who were concerned with quality, and what they meant by that was, EIPs are great, and EIPs have moved the entire ecosystem forward. That's for sure, but they often don't meet the quality and completeness level of standards that. Um, that businesses would expect, something you would see from traditional standards organizations such as IETF or W3C or OASIS or ISO or whatever, okay? And so businesses and governments are a lot more comfortable adopting those kinds of technology standards um, than, the, uh, than some of the ones that they've seen from uh, EIPs. And so the goal was to, was to see, are there projects that could benefit from this additional level of, uh, of rigor? Uh, so we have a formal uh, but open standards development process that includes input from multiple organizations and stakeholders. Uh, and one of the goals with this, of course, was to reduce the bureaucracy. Okay, so for any of you who've ever participated in any of these other standards organizations, you know they have a reputation for being very slow, uh, ponderous, cumbersome. And so our goal is to see if we could put in the minimum amount of bureaucracy to still allow us to get to a good result. So... Um, this is, the, the work itself is actually managed and run by OASIS Open. Um, OASIS is a nonprofit technical standards body, been around for a long time. They're actually known for a lot of XML standards and many others as well. What they did is they actually started a new OASIS Open program specifically for open source software and standards development. Um, so we created an OASIS Open project, I say we, um, so it was the Ethereum Foundation, Consensus and the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance in 2019 started this project. Um, and again, we focused really heavily on the low bureaucracy piece. So the EEA, which of course I obviously represent with my, my shirt here, uh, was founded in 2017. I initially focused, um, for any of you who saw my presentation earlier today, you know what I'm gonna say. We were focused initially on standards development for private chains, okay, and that's because the public chain wasn't ready for businesses to use it uh, a number of years ago. Um, but we have a broader mission now at the EA to include much more ecosystem development work and Ethereum advocacy. So we are looking at moving, well, we've already been moving beyond private chains for a while now. Um, we're actually looking much, much more broadly than that. So in particular, even though enterprise is in our title, and we know that people sometimes hate that enterprise word, the reality is we are business focused. And so you'll hear that more and more from the EA. You can almost think of us as, uh, you know, the uh, Ethereum Business Alliance, you know, as far as the way we, we operate. Um, so we actually, we like the way Oasis started the, uh, the open projects and uh, decided that we would work together with them. We particularly liked how inclusive it was of the entire uh, Ethereum community. Um, it's important to point out that EA membership is not required to participate in the community projects, and that's why they're called community projects. Okay, um, and at this point, I think I'm switching over to Taj to tell you what we're up to. Yeah, so, oh, thank you. Uh, so what do we look for in an EEA community project? What kind of projects are a good fit? Uh, Ethereum first name, Ethereum first projects, as the name implies, Ethereum should be central to the project, although it doesn't have to be exclusively Ethereum, it can support other chains. Uh, we look for projects that want to do open standards development, often from initial source, 
initial open source software. So there can be a software implementation around which a standard is developed, or there can be no implementation, you just develop a standard first. Uh, either one's okay, but it must be open, i.e. Uh, contributors must be willing to sign a contributor license agreement that ensures that there will be no, um, th all contributions are open source, there's no intellectual property, no, no patents associated with the contributions to that standard. So the standard should be completely open source. And to start a project, we look for at least three and ideally five organizations to sponsor a project. So one company cannot define a standard. A standard exists when multiple or entities get together and hash out their differences and agree on something. So we look for at least three and, and hopefully more than three uh, entities often that have competing interests to get together and discuss and agree on something which we can call a standard. So um, how is it governed? The EEA Community Projects is governed by a project governing board, and then each project has a technical steering committee. So there's one project govern governing board, and there's a TSC for each standards development project. The PGB meets every two weeks. Uh, it, it manages the TSCs, it authorizes and makes rules for the TSCs. It does not make technical decisions. It's just a kind of a middle level of governance between OASIS and the TSCs. Dan and I are the co-chairs. Uh, and the TSC also includes members from each, sorry, the PGB also includes members from each TSC, so it, each TSC gets a seat on the PGB, and also companies that sponsor the EEA community projects by giving us money get a seat on the TSC, uh, on the PGB, if they want one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so each project is governed by its own technical steering committee, the, so the technical steering committee makes, uh, sets the governance rules for that project. They can be pretty flexible. The PGB has to approve the rules. Um, so there is some degree of customizability for each project to set their own rules and get it approved by the PGB. The members um, of the PTSC are typically the most active contributors to that project. And the TSCs report to the PGB. So what projects do we have or what have we worked on so far? Baseline protocol is probably the biggest one. Baseline protocol is a standard that enables enterprises to synchronize complex multi-party business processes with privacy and without moving data from systems of record using Ethereum as a common frame of reference. So uh, basically it enables companies that engage in multi-party business transactions to do so in a way that doesn't leak any confidential information from their databases. It also ensures that all of their system, each company's systems are in sync and that each company is doing the correct thing and proving that with zero knowledge proofs. Wow. Um, we also have a layer two standards working group. We just talked about that earlier at a different room. So the layer two standards working group, as the name implies, is developing standards for layer twos, which is, I think, very important. Um, there's been some work done on uh, formalizing the standards and specifications for the JSON RPC client API. And we've been talking about a, a new project called TokenScript possibly coming in. TokenScript is a JavaScript, WebAssembly, and XML framework to improve the functionality, security, and usability of blockchain tokens. Um, and if you have an idea for a project, we would love to hear from you. We would love to hear have more projects coming into the EEA community projects to improve the quality of standards development within the Ethereum ecosystem. So we have sponsors. Sponsors have provided money to help us get stuff done. Um, some big companies like EY, Accenture, and SAP, and also a lot of smaller crypto-focused companies. So there's quite a wide variety of sponsors. If you are interested in getting in, uh, in, in, in starting a new standards development project or participating in one of the existing ones, please get in touch. Here's how. Uh, and thanks for sticking around till the last, minute, last talk of the day. <laughs> Woo! Amazing. Thank you so much. So, yeah, reach out to Dan and Taz if you have any ide some ideas to keep improving the Ethereum ecosystem or you want to join a project with them. So, thank you so much. And thank you all. This is uh, the last talk of the day and a very amazing day for DEF CON. This is the biggest DEF CON till now. We are more than 5,000 5, people. So, amazing. I hope you enjoy it. And I'm Anna, and thank you so much. Have a great life. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs>